Dick's and Lionel Richie. Well, my friends, the tide has come to raise the roof and to have some fun. soul and feel it in your heart you know the words let the music take control we go to party climate fiesta forever come on and sing along we go to party alignment fiesta forever come on and sing along Watch the rhythm take their feet. Life is good, wild and sweet. Let the music play on them. You know it. Feel it in your heart and feel it in your soul. Let the music take control. We go to
Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Schulich Alumni Recognition Awards. I would like to commence this evening's program with a traditional land acknowledgement. As this meeting is virtual and we're not gathered at the same place, I recognize this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory that you're currently on. We ask that if this is the case, that you take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory you're on and the current treaty holders. As a member of the York University community, I recognize that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located and which precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Takaronto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, this territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. And that's the land acknowledgement. And let the show begin. We are delighted to have you here tonight. My name is Marcia Anizat. I'm a proud faculty member here at the Schulich School of Business. I'm the Associate Dean Academic and I'm also a professor in the accounting area. I work and I have the honor to work with a team of talented professionals here at the school. And I am equally honored and delighted to be your master of ceremonies for this special evening for the Schuler community. And ladies and gentlemen, do we ever have a great evening planned for you? Following the formal part of the award presentation, guests will be able to enjoy live entertainment as you have already enjoyed. And we will offer personal congratulations to our winners. You will offer personal congratulations to our winners in the four award recipient uh, launches that will be opened. Of course, speaking about winners. Tonight, we are celebrating innovation, achievements, and extraordinary success to our four alumni and friends. This evening, we are honored to have Vince Comiso, Tracy Pierce, Bob Wong, and representing Paul Labbe, who recently passed away, is his daughter, Paul Labbe, her mother, Grace, and members of the Labbe family are here with us. The four individuals being honored this evening are outstanding leaders in their careers. They are outstanding in their professions, in their community, and of course, for their alma mater, the Schulich School of Business. I have no doubt that we will all leave here tonight very impressed and inspired by all they have achieved, which I know they will continue to achieve. So to begin our program, I would like to introduce our new Dean, the new Dean of the Schulich School of Business, Dean Detlev Zwick. So about Detlev, prior to becoming Dean, Professor Zwick was the Associate Dean Academic and successfully led the school's rapid transition to remote online learning in March, 2020. Several months later, he was appointed interim dean and oversaw several key initiatives, including intensifying research productivity and knowledge mobilization, collaborating with a wide range of stakeholders to address systemic barriers for Black and Indigenous students, and engaging corporate partners to financially support a record number of students. Last month, he was appointed the Dean of the Schulich School. And I know Detlev is excited to work together with everyone in the Schulich community to lead our school forward. So please welcome 
Dean Zwick. Thank you, Marcia. Uh, let me begin by extending a warm welcome to everyone joining us this evening here in Toronto and around the world. And of course, a very special welcome to this year's alumni award recipients, as well as to their families, friends and colleagues who are here sharing this wonderful occasion with them. The Alumni Recognition Awards are one of our school's oldest and most celebrated traditions. They were established in 1992, and these awards were created to publicly recognize and celebrate the career success of our alumni and friends. And today, we have more than 33,000 graduates who are living and working in over 90 countries around the world. Truly graduates are making an impact in every facet of business and in every industry, from arts and entertainment to mining, from real estate and finance, from supply chain management to marketing. Our graduates are CEOs and chairs, senior corporate leaders running major divisions and business units. They're business innovators and pioneers, and they are successful entrepreneurs. And our graduates are also increasingly being recognized for their achievements, winning everything from Lifetime Achievement Awards to Entrepreneur of the Year honors. And tonight, we celebrate the outstanding achievements of three of these highly accomplished alumni, Vince Camisso, Tracy Pierce, and Bob Wong, as well as loyal friend of the school, Paul Abbe, who sadly passed in November 2019. The accomplishments and career achievements are worthy of our admiration and applause. All of our alumni are a vital part of the Schule community. They financially support scholarships and bursaries for our students. They teach in our classrooms. They serve as mentors and role models. They act as judges at our case competitions. And they provide strategic advice to the school as members of our various advisory councils and the high our graduates. To all of our alumni with us this evening who have contributed in one of these many ways, we sincerely thank you for your support. I would just add on a personal comment, during my time here at Schulich, nearly 20 years now, I've gotten to know the faculty and staff very well, and I've come to appreciate their skill and talents their dedication and commitment. But it was really only when I became interim dean 16 months ago that I, was, that I really appreciated more fully what our alumni mean to the school and what an enormous role they play in our school's success. I've met so many of you over the past year and I'm constantly amazed by your generosity and your commitment to your alma mater. In closing, I wish to thank our sponsors, TD Insurance, for the generous support. And I would also like to thank the dedicated staff and team of Schulich uh, professionals who organized this event. Uh, thank you, of course, as well to Marcia Anisette, who has generally agreed to be our Master of Ceremonies this evening, uh, uh, and who is an invaluable member of our senior leadership team here at Schulich. And last but not least, to all of our outstanding Schulich Alumni Award recipients, congratulations on your tremendous achievement and success. Thank you and enjoy the evening. And thank you, Detlev. Thank you, Dean Zwick. Now, before we hear from our award recipients, let me first draw your attention to the original glass sculpture that each of our recipients has received. These sculptures are produced by the studio of the late acclaimed glass artist, Jeff Goodman. Each piece is distinctively unique and most definitely a work of art that we hope each of our recipients will proudly display in their home or their offices. When Jeff Goodman was commissioned by Schulich to design the award, he described the sculpture as an abstract representation of our school's status as a global leader and our school's ability to shape the future. It was Jeff's, Jeff's hope that each of the recipients of the alumni award 
would recognize their own achievements in the positive aspects of the sculpture. To our award recipients, we hope you enjoy this special piece of art and the Schulich pride we have in you and your success that comes with it. So now, let's get on with the show. It's now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Trina McQueen. A bit about Trina. Dr. McQueen is Schulich's first visiting CTV professor in broadcast management. And she's held several senior executive and journalistic positions in the public and private sectors of Canadian television. For her services to broadcasting, she was made an officer of the Order of Canada in the year 2005. She was awarded an honorary doctorate in 2019 by York University and is currently serving as the co-director of the Arts, Media and Entertainment Management Program at Schulich. I invite her to give the introduction for outstanding executive leadership to Vince Comiso, class of MBA 1992 and co-founding partner President and CEO, Nine Story Media Group. Thank you, Marcia. This award to alumnus Vince Camiso is for outstanding executive leadership. I am delighted to present it. And I want to mention each of those words, leadership, executive, and most of all, outstanding. As a leader, Vince is the entrepreneurial co-founder and CEO of Nine Story Productions producer and distributor of children's programming. It is one of Canada's largest media companies, operates internationally with offices in five countries, customers and partnerships around the world. His much loved brands include a big red dog and a wonderful small tiger. As an executive, Vince leads his company in acquiring the best technology to create his programs. He is a collaborator. He chooses and nurtures the best talent, and they respond. Nine Stories programs win awards around the world, 14 Emmys and two Academy Award nominations. But let's talk about outstanding. He leads a company with purpose. The purpose is to make children laugh and inspire them to learn. Millions of children have responded to those objectives, but he also inspires his employees. As an executive, Vince leads his company in acquiring the best possible technology to create his wonderful animation and live action programs. He is a collaborator. He chooses and nurtures the best talent and they respond. Nine Stories programs win awards around the world, 14 Emmys and two Academy Award nominations. But let's talk about outstanding. Vince leads the company with purpose. The purpose is to make children laugh and inspire them to learn. Millions of children have responded to these objectives, but he also inspires him, his employees. Here is his DEI statement. Just as we see and value every child in front of every screen, we see and value everyone involved. We strive for inclusion in all that we say, in all that we do, and in all that we put out into the world. We leave no one behind. Vince's former executive assistant is now taking her MBA JD program at Schulich and at Osgood. She told me that it was Vince who inspired her and built her confidence to do this. She said, he is one of my favorite people in the whole world. And so it is an honor to present this award for outstanding executive leadership to Vince who is one of Schulich's favorite people in the whole world. Good evening all, and thank you, Trina, for that lovely introduction. It's wonderful to be able to speak with you, and I do very much look forward to doing so in person, which will be in the near, very near future, I'm sure. I hope all of you and your families have managed through the pandemic as well as can be expected, and can look forward to some sense of normalcy, such as that will be. First, my sincere thanks to the Schulich Global Alumni Network for bestowing upon me this prestigious award. I would like to congratulate Tracy, 
Robert, and the late Paul Labbe for their successes and richly deserved recognition of their accomplishments. When I graduated from Schulich in 1992, I never imagined that my career would unfold such that I would be the recipient of the Outstanding Executive Leadership Award, or that I would be as involved with the Schulich alumni as I am. My two big takeaways from this are that I have experienced much good fortune and successes in my career, and that I still have so much to learn. My time at Schulich has prepared me for both. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Dean Emeritus Dejo Horvath for his 32 years of outstanding service to the Schulich School of Business. His contributions and achievements are too many to list. Suffice to say that his impact will continue to be felt by students and alumni alike for years to come. To our new Dean, Professor Detlev Swick, my sincere congratulations. Your leadership as interim Dean at a time when Schulich rapidly and effectively transitioned to remote learning while simultaneously managing many new initiatives was truly inspiring. Dean Swick, we look forward to the journey with you at the helm. Now, as I reflect upon reaching the stage of my career and being the recipient of the Outstanding Executive Leadership Award, I begin to think about what leadership means and how my experiences have formed its definition. To me, it means many things, but it boils down to three fundamentals in no particular order, positivity, listening, and authenticity. First, positivity. We are required as leaders to take people in certain directions, to have a view of the market, make a bet on what's coming, and then devise a strategy by which we can compete in that market. The ultimate objective, of course, is growth, but people need more than that. They need a reason, as the cliche goes, to get up in the morning. Leaders must have and must infuse in others a fundamental belief that tomorrow we will do whatever we're doing today just a tiny bit better, and that over time, we'll accomplish great things if we stick with it. Positivity is the emotional fuel that powers everyone along that journey. I'm fortunate enough to lead a business that essentially creates something from nothing. We have no raw materials except our collective imagination and the mechanisms by which we convert that imagination to something of value for our audience. Without positivity, we may be able to deliver shows, but they'll never be what they could have been if we had given it our all. I've had experience in only two industries, real estate and entertainment, and neither was renowned for their warmth and fuzziness. But they've evolved, as they must, to thrive in the ever-changing dynamics presented by both workers and consumers. In keeping with my optimistic nature, I believe that's a good thing. Next is listening. There is a difference between being a good listener and listening. Being a good listener means the person who's speaking to you remarks positively about your conduct during the discussion and generally nothing beyond that. Listening, on the other hand, is an overt act of openness, one where there is a craving of information and input from as many sources as possible. That input generally falls into three buckets. Things that will be done, things that won't be done, and things that may require further consideration. Anyone with the courage to provide input deserves to understand what bucket it will find itself in and why. Fundamental to the overt act of openness is an embrace of the fact that you, as leader, could be wrong. Business is a team sport. To borrow from a Schulich analogy and from my unabashed Canadianness, in addition to my lifelong frustration as a Maple Leaf fan, the puck may not always be going where you think it's going. If you have good people around you, you've likely attracted them by creating a culture where their input is required. Being open to input and attracting good people often go hand in hand. The pace of change today demands that good businesses have both. Last, but certainly not least, is authenticity. I start by acknowledging that we are doing business in a much more egalitarian time than when I started my career. All the things that provided perceived standing 20 years ago don't matter as much today. 
Many leaders embrace positivity and listening as guiding philosophies to their, to their approach and apply them uniquely in ways consistent with who they are, deploying many tools and nuances in the process. Especially today, if you aren't doing this in a manner that's true to you, you won't last long. It's too hard to lead by emulating any way of being, as admirable as it may be, that isn't congruent with who you are. This, of course, does not give you license to lose control of your emotions or to be reactive versus proactive. Quite the opposite, in fact. If you're going to be constructive, in addition to being positive and open, you have to mean it. People will know almost immediately if you don't. If you've been in many meetings over the years where I have, when you're thinking, man, what do I have to do to end this thing? In many instances, right after, someone would ask me why I didn't want to be there. And I've learned that it's far more valuable to really answer that question than to attend meetings just to be there. I was being authentic and not wanting to be there, but that added no value. Do you and do it your way. These are the principles I hold most dear, but the true testament of leadership is to encourage leaders of the future. Whatever amount of leadership there is in the world today, we can definitely use more. In closing, I'd like to thank you all for being here this evening. I'm honored to receive this award, and I'm immensely proud to be a Schulich graduate and of my continued association with the school. Thank you, Trina, for that warm introduction. And Vince, many congratulations. This is such a well-deserved achievement. Before we invite our next speaker, allow me to thank our sponsor, TD Insurance. TD Insurance has been a loyal sponsor of the Schulich Alumni Recognition Awards and York University's alumni programs. We are grateful for your support, TD, in helping make tonight's awards possible. So now to our second award. Our second alumni award this evening is for outstanding progress and achievement. And this will be introduced by my colleague, Dr. Joyce Siemens, about Joyce. Joyce is a senior scholar and university professor emerita who has recently retired from being the director of the MBA program in arts and entertainment sorry arts media and entertainment management Joyce is a member of the order of Canada and she's also a former director of the Canadian Council of Arts Joyce's former dean of the faculty of fine arts currently known as the School of Arts, Media, Performance and Design at York University. So I invite Joyce to deliver her introduction for Tracy Pierce, MBA class of 1996, Senior Media Executive and Strategic Advisor. I'm honored to present to you Tracy Pierce. Randy Lennox, then president of Bell Media stated it clearly, Tracy's integrity, creativity, and attention to detail have been critical to Bell Media's success and to shaping the future of the Canadian media industry. Already a successful lawyer, Tracy's interest in the entertainment industry led her in 1995 to Schulich to do her MBA with a specialization in arts and media. Not surprisingly, for those who know her, Tracy graduated gold medalist in her year. I have followed Tracy's stellar career with more than occasional amazement, as I have watched her raise two fabulous children, Cole and Ava, and had the privilege of becoming her friend. Here with a few highlights of Tracy's accomplishment, most recently as Bell Media President, Distribution and Pay with commentary from some of her colleagues. Speaking of her role as general counsel for the 2010 Vancouver Olympic Consortium, Yvonne Fetsan, then CTV's CEO observed, lawyers break into two categories. There are deal breakers and the deal makers. Tracy is a deal maker. 
for Vancouver, she pulled together CTV, Rogers, TSN, the IOC, and the Vancouver Olympic Committee. Herding cats would have been easier. In 2014, Tracy oversaw all of Bell's English language entertainment and factual specialty channels, in addition to the movie network and HBO. HBO's president programming sales, Charles Schrager observed, Tracy can be both insistent and persistent and also very effective. Our professional relationship has been so intense rigorous and fruitful that it feels as if we've been locked in a conference room for a decade. He added, I never thought that being locked in a conference room for 10 years could be so pleasant and so productive. A firm believer in giving back, Tracy has served as a member of industry boards, including the advisory board of Canada's top 10 under 40, and as a valued member of Schulich's Arts, Media and Entertainment Management Advisory Committee. In 2016, she received Women in Film and Television Toronto's Crystal Award for Outstanding Achievement in Business for her leadership and her inspiration. Saperna Kala, President International Networks at STARS, observed, service and commitment come naturally to Tracy. She is a champion of other women executives always willing to lend an ear or a word of advice, always calm, always graceful, always elegant, and always a leader. Brilliant, far-sighted, a superb manager, a wise leader, a great parent, and a wonderful friend dedicated to making the world a better place. It is now my pleasure to invite Tracy Pierce, to accept her award for outstanding progress and achievement. Thank you, Joyce. And thank you, Dean Zwick, and congratulations on your recent appointment. Thank you also to Associate Dean Marcia Anaset for hosting this evening, and Aloma Gravel, Director of Alumni Relations and the administrative team for putting this all together in challenging times. I'd like to acknowledge Dean Horvath for his long an impressive tenure at the school, as well as the current and past leaders of the arts and media program, including Trina McQueen, Ken Rogers, Brenda Gaynor, and most of all for me personally, Joyce Seaman. Joyce and I have come full circle in some ways. 25 years ago, we sat in her kitchen, me a young lawyer looking to better connect with my desire to work in the creative industries. She gave me tea and advice, and just last week, she did again. The kitchen looks much the same, warm and inviting, full of articles to read and art to see. And remarkably, somehow the same is true for Joyce. Joyce is my friend and my mentor and always my teacher. Thank you also to my fabulous family, my children, Cole and Ava, who may even be watching this at university, and my brother, sister-in-law, nieces and nephew, and to my incredible group of supportive friends. I'm so very lucky to have my family by birth and my family by choice be one and the same. Congratulations to Vince and Robert and the late Paul LeBay, with whom I am sharing recognition tonight. I have reviewed their accomplishments in light of my own and can clearly see I am the participation award winner, perhaps most improved, while keeping company with the MVP, the Hall of Famer and the Coach of the Year. I'm honored to be in their company and to benefit from their inspiration. I look back on my time at Schulich as transformative. It really was the first time I took charge of my education and the program allowed me to do so. To craft my own curriculum with courses from law, theater and fine arts, as well as the business school. I really hope that is still the case and that students are availing themselves of the opportunity. If not, I may have created a host of issues. I also recall the slightly less appealing quirks of York, like the hot water secured after a night class, not to drink, but to pour on my frozen car door so the key would work. But mostly, I remember benefiting enormously from the diversity of my fellow students, their perspectives and experiences, and the well-known satisfaction and torment of group projects. It truly was a playbook for work and for life. I did my MBA, 
because I knew I wanted more out of my career, that I wanted to connect to business and the creative economy in some way after my work as a lawyer, but I wasn't sure how. Yet, if I'm honest, I also did my MBA to have the fortitude to put up my hand when I didn't understand the financials or the strategy. I felt I needed that external seal of approval to address my imposter syndrome instead of understanding that mine was the very natural hesitancy and self-doubt that came from a culture not particularly welcoming to young women executives. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad I did my MBA. It has benefited me tremendously, but those feelings were telling and I know are not unique to me then or now. Just a few months ago, a Harvard Business Review article challenged the notion of imposter syndrome it was called Stop Telling Women They Have Imposter Syndrome, so good heads up there, and invited us to consider fixing the places we work instead of fixing the women at work, to question the culture, not the confidence level. The article went viral and it resonated with me too. I hope we are all looking towards inclusive strategies as we exit the pandemic, ones where we move past coaching and leadership presence courses and mentoring designed to equip underrepresented employees to better fit in and instead begin actioning sustainable systemic solutions that create a more inclusive environment where truly everyone can belong and thrive. Let me end with more thank yous because at the end of the day every award is a team award. So thank you to the colleagues and mentors, coordinators, CEOs, tech support fixers, creators and doers I've worked with along the way so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce, for that eloquent introduction. And Tracy, congratulations on your award and for all of your success and achievements. Now, before we proceed with the next two award presentations, let's welcome back the band for a brief musical intermission break and I'll see you back in about four minutes.
And next up we have a little Sinatra special request. You're gonna love this one. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like. Oh, Jupiter and Mars. In other words. That was fantastic. And I'm looking forward to hearing more of main event music stars. Now, the award for outstanding public contribution will be introduced tonight by alumnus Bill Graham, MBA class of 1986. Bill is also an alumni recognition award recipient receiving the award for outstanding contribution to the school in the year 2013. Currently, Bill is the president of the Schulich Global Alumni Network. He's an executive in residence at the school, and he's also a member of the Dean's Advisory Council. So as you can see, Bill's commitment to the school is deep and continuing. Bill, I invite you to give your introduction for Robert Wong, MBA class of 1972, who is the vice chairman and senior portfolio manager at Leon Fraser and Associates. Well, thank you, Marcia. You know, it's a great honor, but very much a personal pleasure to be able to present this award to Bob Wong this evening. In the program, you will see the many contributions that Bob has made to Canada and to Canadian society. But I can tell you from firsthand experience that the list doesn't cover half of what Bob has done for Canadian communities, organizations, and institutions. I've known Bob for more than 20 years. In fact, I first met Bob at his offices when Bob pulled together a small group asked to advise Paul Martin, who was at that point the Canadian finance minister. And it gave me the first insight into how thoughtful Bob was in pulling together relevant contemporary input for such an important situation. It also showed me how bloody well connected Bob was. Now, a couple of years later, I joined the board of the local club of the CAA, and who do I find there but Bob? And we advanced together through the leadership of that organization and later of CAA nationally. Throughout that experience, Alice and Bob, my wife Jennifer and myself became great friends, and we remain great friends today. Bob and Alice are substantial supporters of Schulich. They have truly given of their time, treasure, and talent. Now, not only is Bob scary smart, 
but he's also insatiably curious. I've seen Bob's home library and it would put the Schulich Library to shame. He continues today to study and evaluate complex algorithms, global trends, and financial analytics that would baffle most of the rest of us. But above it all, Bob is a gentleman, a statesman, a scholar, a generous contributor, and a man of enormous integrity. One of the rare politicians who is added to Canadian life. And by the way, he's the only politician that I've ever really liked. So it gives me great personal pleasure to invite Bob Wong to accept his award for outstanding public contribution. Thank you, Bill, for that very kind introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to receive this special recognition tonight. And I would like to begin by thanking Schulich for this wonderful award. And congratulations to my fellow honorees, Vince and Tracy and the late Paul LeBay. Because Schulich enjoys an international reputation for excellence, and because it's recognized as a global leader in management education, my receiving this award is especially meaningful. So thank you. When I enrolled into the MBA program in the late 60s, I could not have predicted where it would lead me. The Schulich graduate degree prepared me for both a career on Bay Street and also for a life in politics and public service. As an elected parliamentarian, it was an honor and a privilege to serve the people of Ontario and the Peterson government in various portfolios. But when I look back to my student days, I have fond memories of being introduced to the now Nobel Prize winning ideas of Sharp and Markowitz on modern portfolio theory. It was so clear, deductive and logical. And who doesn't remember the 601 policy course? My classmates and I had selected a Montreal broadcasting company as the focus of our analysis. While we were very happy to pass this course, we were even happier when we learned that our strategy professor had subsequently joined the board of directors. At least we like to believe that we had something to do with it. In any event, when management education boomed in the 60s, business schools tended to educate their students to favor profits over the public good. But Schulich, with foresight, had begun to engage us in thinking about business and capitalism in a more socially responsible way. Remember, those were the years just before the Clean Air and the Clean Water Acts were passed in Parliament and just before Canada's multiculturalism policy was announced. Today, climate change and net zero, along with diversity, inclusion, and equity are very much top of mind. Back then in the classrooms, we had many discussions on the role of business in society and how we wanted our place of work to reflect both purpose and values. So today, it's very good to see that many companies have adopted these and other values as essential parts of their corporate DNA. So thank you, Schulich, for giving me the insights, the educational foundation in business, the confidence and inspiration to succeed in a world that continues to require the reimagining of capitalism while striving for greater social justice in the workplace and in society. And much appreciation to the talent of the late Jeff Goodman, who created this beautiful glass sculpture. It's a wonderful representation, in his words, of the school's status as a global leader and as a school which has the ability to shape the future. Finally, I wish to express my heartfelt appreciation to all those very special people around me who have given me their advice and support over the years. My dear wife, Alice, of 50 years, my family and good friends, associates, 
from the business, political, and government sectors. Thanks also to those community organizations with whom I've served. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to advocate and work along with you on your many worthy causes as we all strive to make this world a better place. Thank you again, Shuler. Thank you. And Bill, thank you for helping us appreciate how deserving Robert is of this award. And Robert, congratulations on your award, and thank you for the impact that you're making on the lives of so many in the community. Now for our final award this evening, Outstanding Contribution to the Schulich School of Business. This award is given to a graduate or friend of the school, and it is my great pleasure to ask my dear friend and colleague, Dean Emeritus Dejo Horvath, to give the introduction. Dean Emeritus Horvath joined the Schulich School of Business in 1977 and was first appointed Dean of our school in 1988. He has been our guiding light for 32 years and retired in June of last year. The Dean is a member of the Order of Canada. He's received the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. And in 2004, he was named Dean of the Year by the Academy of International Business. We are so pleased that he joins us to introduce a friend of the school who recently passed away, Paul Labay, former chair of the Dean's International Advisory Council. Thank you, Marcia, and good evening, everyone. It is my great honor to introduce Paul Labay, a colleague and friend, a trusted advisor to, this, to our school, and a truly remarkable man who passed away in November 2019 following a seven-year battle with cancer. Paul John Schulich's International Advisory Council in 1993 at the height of his career, a time when he was president of Export Development Canada. Paul became chair of the council and admirably served in that role for 10 years. As chair, he took great pride in the school and its accomplishments. He always encouraged his fellow council members to share their insights, and he often provided his own thoughtful views based on decades of experience in international matters as a trade commissioner, as a senior civil servant, and an international commerce executive. Those who knew Paul best described him as a statesman and a true gentleman. His obituary described him as a principled man of high energy and big ideas who led by example. When I think of Paul, the qualities that shine brightest for me were his great integrity and his decency. He believed in the dignity of each individual and he took great satisfaction in mentoring people and helping them reach their full potential. He was above all a devoted family man and a man of great religious faith. Also, Paul is never one to seek out honors and tributes. I cannot think of another person more deserving of the award of outstanding contribution to the school. He is greatly missed, and tonight's recognition is a fitting way for us to honor his many contributions. It is now my pleasure to introduce Paul's daughter. Paul Labbe, who is attending to accept her father's award. In addition, I would like to mention that also attending this evening is Paul's wife, Grace, and members of their family. I will now ask Paul to say a few words about her father. Thank you. It's a real honor to represent my family and accept this award on behalf of my father. My father spent his career in both the public and private sector, working to strengthen Canadian businesses to succeed in international trade. And after spending many decades in the thick of trade related issues, being the chair of the Schulich School of Business International Advisory Committee was one of his great pleasures. 
It allowed him to contribute his wealth of knowledge and experience to furthering Canadian capacity through one of its top educational institutions. My father didn't talk much, but he always spoke with admiration about the work being done by the Schulich School of Business. He would have been honored to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Emeritus, for your heartwarming introduction. And Paul, we appreciate that you could join us today. We appreciate that you could join us with your mom and members of your family to help us honor the contributions that your father made to our school. And ladies and gentlemen, this ends the formal part of our program for the Alumni Recognition Awards. I want to thank each one of you for being here with us tonight to celebrate and honor our amazing award recipients. But the evening is not over. As I mentioned earlier, we invite you to enjoy the live entertainment, which you can do right here in the main stage. You can also personally congratulate our award recipients in the award recipient lounges that are now open. Once again, thank you to our sponsor, TD Insurance, who made tonight possible, and special thanks to the organizers of tonight's event. I look forward to seeing all of you later in the evening. Good night.
God bless you. Good night.